Okay, so I know what you're thinking. He's made a clickbait thumbnail to try and connect one of the most anticipated games of 2025 with a really old, boring subject. And yeah, you're probably right. There is actually a really strong connection between these soul-like games and mathematics. Something I realized pretty early on is that learning maths is exactly like leveling up in these Souls-like games. It's just an endless set of boss fights. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Ryan, a Cambridge mathematician and ex step marker. So today, I wanted to go through why your math journey is just like any video game like Silk Song or Elden Ring. Especially if you're preparing for anything like Step, TMUA, or pretty much any really difficult maths exam. Now, studies have shown that a really effective learning method is to try and gamify your learning. And that's what I'm gonna try and do today, try and reframe how you think about learning maths to more of a game mindset. And it makes it feel a lot less intimidating. Understanding this idea is kind of how I've always thought about maths. It's kind of guided me through all my mathematical journey. Now, if you're someone who's ever got stuck on a difficult problem and just thought, ah, oh, I'm just bad at maths, I'm gonna try and reframe how you think about learning maths, as well as give you some motivation to push on through some of those difficult problems and potentially solve some of the most difficult problems you've ever solved. So picture this, you start off one of those games like Silk Song or Elden Ring, and you're dropped into this massive open world for the first time. And you're not really given anything. You might be given a stick to fight with and maybe some basic armor if you're lucky. You don't know any of the attacks or spells yet, and you don't really understand the mechanics. And that first boss, you probably died to it like a hundred times. At least if you're as bad as me. This is exactly what it's like when you first open one of those difficult maths paper. You've got your basic maths tools, like maybe your algebra, your times tables, that's your starting equipment. But then you see question one and it's asking you to prove something about sequences and series that you've never ever thought about before. And here's what people don't really get. In both cases, this is completely normal and expected. The game is designed for you to start off weak. You're meant to struggle at first. You have to level up, you have to practice. Now in any good Souls like game, what do you do? You start and collect weapons, you collect spells. That fire spell you picked up in that dungeon becomes really useful against the next boss you face. That dodge roll technique, you've used it like a thousand times to dodge every enemy that you've came across. In mathematics, these spells, these weapons, are your techniques and tools that you'll use. A quick differentiation, well that's pretty easy to do, that's your quick attack. Proof by induction, well that's a bit more of a brute force long way around, so that's more of a heavy attack. Finding a substitution, well that's harder to do and it only works in specific cases, so that's more of a charged up spell that you'll only use against specific enemies. But just like in a game, you don't need all these spells immediately. You build up your toolkit over time. But here's what people always miss. If you learn a new technique, a new attack, try and remember it. In the case of maths, write it down. You wanna be able to write it down and practice it so that when you need it, you can easily use it. What's the point in spending all that time learning that new technique if it's just gonna sit in your inventory and do nothing? These techniques you learn in those hard questions will likely come up again. So make sure you know how to do it again. Write it down so that you can go back to it and see it. In a game, you get to go to settings and see how to use it. But in maths, you need to write it down so you can use it. Okay, so let's talk about boss fights. Or as we can call them in mathematics. These are just the really difficult problems that you can't solve immediately. It's kind of what university admissions tests are set up to be all about. They're meant to challenge you. Now, you know when you walk into that boss arena in, say, Elden Ring? Then there's this massive health bar along the bottom. And you have that moment of realization where you go like, oh no, what, how the hell am I gonna do this? That's the exact same feeling that some people have when you open one of these difficult maths papers. You open it up and there's just so much in front of you and you're like, I don't know how to solve most of this. But here's the key. You're not supposed to beat the boss on the first try. It was never set up that way. In fact, if you are beating the boss on the first try every time, you're probably not doing difficult enough questions. So you wanna try a more difficult problem. So what do we do when we attempt these bosses? That first attempt, that's more about reconnaissance. You're trying to get a bit of information about the boss. You're trying to learn his attack patterns or how best to dodge. In math terms, that's more about understanding the problem. You're trying to see what techniques might work, what ones definitely don't work. Maybe you try integration by parts and you're realizing it gets messier and messier as you go down, not any cleaner. Often the thing with integration by parts. And that's not a failure. You've learned something there. Try and see why is integration by parts not working and maybe try something else next time. It's valuable information, not a failure. Here's probably one of the most important parallels between the two. In the likes of Silk Song, dying to a boss isn't failure. You haven't lost the whole game, you need to start the whole thing again. 
it's literally built into the game that you respawn back at your last checkpoint. So what you want to do is respawn, try again, do something a little bit different, see if you can get a little bit better each time, see if you can get the boss down to his second phase or even kill him this time. Maths is just the same. Come back, try a different technique, did it work? If not, why didn't it work? What can I try next time? This is where I have a bit of a gripe with how A levels and schooling has been done. In likes of A levels and GCSEs at school, we've kind of been conditioned to think that if we can't solve a problem straight away, that just means we're bad at maths. But in reality, that's the complete opposite. Some of the best mathematicians are spending time failing at problems to understand what does work and what doesn't work. It's the whole point of a PhD. But what you need to take away from that is, if something didn't work, why didn't it work? What can you try instead? Now, when I was preparing for these difficult admissions tests, I didn't have a, necessarily a rule, but I had a process that I went through. And I would only really look at the mark scheme as a last resort. My first attempt was always to see what happens naturally. What do my instincts tell me to do on that problem? And sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. So my second attempt is to try something completely different. Try and take some insight from my first attempt and see if I can do something better, get a little bit further in the problem. And if that still doesn't work, I'll try a couple of other things, but then I'll eventually, I'll take a break. I'll maybe take a day in between and I'll keep it on my mind. I'll still be thinking about it. When I go to bed, it might, something might come up. I might get a bit of inspiration about the problem. And I can take that and when I come to attempt it again, I can then have another go. And now if that still doesn't work, what we want to do is take some hints. Don't take the full solution. There's no point in taking the full solution because then you've not learned anything. Take a little bit of a hint. Maybe just look at the portion of the solution that you need to see and see if it can help you move along with the problem. This idea is exactly like fighting a boss multiple times. Every death teaches you something new. And now this is my favourite part of maths. When you finally beat that boss, when you've spent ages doing it, that victory is so much sweeter. All that work and all that effort was worthwhile. Exactly like beating a boss in likes of Elden Ring, it's really frustrating at the time, losing again and again and again, but so satisfying once you beat it. As the famous saying goes, practice makes perfect. In these kind of games, you don't just fight enemies randomly. You don't go and fight the little underlings that you've beaten a thousand times, there's just no point. You deliberately try and practice the techniques you've learned. Practice those specific mechanics. You might spend an hour just practicing your dodge so that you're, you're able to dodge the next boss you face. With Step, MAT, Team UA, it's the exact same thing. Don't just randomly do problems. Try and focus on the ones that you're either struggling with or want to learn more of. So let's say something like differential equations something that comes up on step all the time. And if you're not good at it, it might be worth practicing that. So if it does come up on the exam, you've got a good chance of being able to solve it. And then hopefully with this practice, you'll literally be able to feel yourself level up. That integral that took you 45 minutes last week might only take you 20 this week. And that's a massive improvement. Now, similarly with games and with math, there's a thing called the difficulty spike. And this often happens in these open world games. You know, when you stumble into that area that you weren't really meant to go to, but you got to somehow. And then there's this boss, boss that one-shots you every single time. Then you turn around, you fight a different enemy, he one-shots you every time. Well, it's kind of like attempting a university problem when you've only done GCSE. It's kind of going to be impossible. So what you don't want to do is stumble on problems that you're not ready for. Similarly, you don't want to stumble on bosses that you're just not ready for yet. This is why structured preparation for these kind of tests is really, really important. You don't want to fight the final boss with your starting equipment. It just doesn't make any sense. Now, when it comes to games, what you can do is you can probably go on YouTube and find a tutorial that takes you on the most efficient path to defeat all the bosses. Does the same exist for maths? Well, yeah, it does. If you think about maths, it's way older than the likes of Silk Song or Elden Ring. Millions of people have been doing this for years and years and years, and they've already set out a path for you. Progression should be GCSE, going on to A level, Matt, then team your way, so it's a little bit easier than step. Step one, then two, then three, and then finally, going on to university maths, and if you're crazy, probably going on to do PhD. These levels have been set up for each level to prepare you for the next. Skip one, and you're gonna struggle, and you'll probably have to spend time catching up on the previous level. Now, you know what's really funny about video games is you fight a boss at the start, and he's really difficult. You've probably faced him a hundred times, and you struggle every time, but then you meet him later on in the game, and he's not even a mini boss anymore, he's just a regular enemy. Since you've leveled up so far, that first boss just isn't even a threat anymore. You probably don't even, you probably just jump past him. This happens constantly in maths. You might even look back and think once you've finished A level, going back and doing the hardest ever GCSE problem, 
probably a walk in the park. That awful integration that you did in year 12, by the time you're at university, it's just one small step in a much larger proof and you're doing it without even thinking about it. I remember 3D vectors, one of the hardest parts of A-level further maths. By the time you got to university, it's not even 3D anymore, it's infinite dimensions and you don't even break a sweat anymore. But what you need to remember is the bosses aren't getting easier. You are getting stronger. Your maths level is increasing as you do more and more of these problems. And finally, let's talk about something that doesn't really apply to maths in general, but does definitely apply to maths tests. And that is metagaming. Because both games and maths tests have it. In gaming, the meta is understanding the optimal strategy, the quickest routes, the best weapons to get. In maths, especially like the university admissions tests, it's about understanding which topics come up most often, how the examiners like to have solutions structured, any time management strategies you can employ, and when to move on from a problem, and also how to get all those tricky to get marks. It isn't really cheating or gaming the system, it's just understanding the rules of the game that they've set out. And just like how speedrunners optimise every little movement, top math students optimise their approach for every single problem, knowing how to score the top marks. So the best way to do that is to look at the examiner feedback and the full mark schemes. Okay, so we've talked about how when you go to math lessons, you're essentially just playing silk song the whole day. But how do you actually apply this to your math lessons? How do we apply this mentality? Well, remember how I said you start with basic equipment? Apply this to how you think about revision. You don't want to just jump in and start trying to kill every boss. You want to start off slow, start building up your toolkit of math techniques. Every time you solve a problem with a technique you've not seen before, write it down with a bit of context, just enough so that you can apply it again if you see something similar. This means we're not forgetting all those spells and attacks we've learned. It's all being kept so that we can use it again. And now what we need to do is embrace that respawn mentality. When a problem absolutely destroys you, don't just look at the solution and move on. Don't just give up. Think about it as a boss that you need to fight. Come back again and again, try a different technique, try something else. Try and learn from your failures. And remember to always have a bit of a break, keep it on your mind and see if you get any inspiration in the meantime. And then you'll notice, if you can solve last week's nightmare problem this week pretty quickly, you'll see how you've leveled up, just like those returning bosses. So, here's my challenge for you. Next time you sit in one of those really difficult maths papers, change your mindset. You're not sitting a test, you're just playing a game. Those problems aren't there to judge you, they're designed to make you level up. Those students who get into top university like Cambridge, Oxford, Imperial, they're not necessarily better at maths than you. They've just played the game longer, they've died to more bosses and collected more maths tools along the way. And remember, your maths journey is just a game, you're the main character, and it's about time you started levelling up. Now, I hope this video helped reframe how you think about those difficult maths problems. Please drop a like and subscribe. I make videos on the likes of STEP, TMUA and MAT to try and help students get into top universities. Drop a comment, let me know which mathematical boss you're facing now, and I'll see you in the next one.